Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my picks for the best YA books of 2021. It is one of my favorite times of year where I get to bring you all of my end of year content, my best of lists, my most anticipated. There is a whole playlist of end of year videos if you have missed any of them, but in today's video, I am telling you my picks for the 21 best YA books that were published in 2021. I will always tell you at the beginning of a video if this is just focused on books published in the current year or books I read in the current year. For today's video, this is just looking at YA books that actually came out in 2021. I have 21 books to talk about and some really fantastic ones I'm excited to share with all of you. I am going to be going in a loosely ranked order. I didn't spend a ton of time perfecting this, but in general I'm going from the lower rated ones that I think are really good all the way up to my favorites at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and dive in because there's a lot of books to talk about. Coming in at number 21 is So Many Beginnings by Bethany C. Morrow. This is one of a couple of remixed classics you're going to see on this list. I have really enjoyed what they've been doing with these, bringing a fresh spin and a different take on classic literature. This is a remix of Little Women. It follows a Black family with daughters living in the South during and following the Civil War, and I really liked it a lot. It's not a perfect book, but I think it does some very interesting things in the way that it retells and reimagines this story from a new perspective. So I definitely wanted to include this on this list. I think it's a really good example of some cool things that are happening in YA literature right now. Coming in at number 20 is the second book from that remixed classic series that you're going to see here. This is Clash of Steel by C.B. Lee. This is a queer Asian take on Treasure Island. It's set in the South China Sea and follows two teen girls. It's got lots of adventure. It deals a lot with family issues. And one thing that I think is really cool is that the treasure in this book is pulling on the real history of a Chinese sort of pirate queen that actually existed. And in the author's note at the end, the author tells you a little bit about it. I really loved this and I'm including it in my best YA of 2021. Number 19 is The Girls Are Never Gone by Sarah Glenn Marsh. This is a YA ghost story. I haven't heard a lot of other people talking about it this year, but I thought it was fantastic and definitely deserved to be on this list. Our main character is a bisexual teen girl with type 1 diabetes, and it is own voices representation for both of those things. So the author draws on a lot of her own experiences with type 1 diabetes, and that's not something I've seen represented a whole lot in children's literature or young adult literature, which I really loved. This book does get quite spooky and scary. Our main character does a podcast where she investigates rumors of ghosts and hauntings, and for this season of her podcast she's spending the summer volunteering at what might be a haunted house that needs to be refurbished for historical purposes. And while there she might find love with a girl that she's also working with, I really like this. It goes there, it gets kind of scary, it's got a paranormal twist to it. Sarah Glenn Marsh is fantastic and I think a really underappreciated author, so go check this out if it sounds up your alley. Number 18 for me is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I really, really liked this. It is for sure on the dark side, especially for YA. It's a gothic kind of mystery thriller with, like, I guess you could say morally gray characters. It's got quite a twist ending, and I feel like this is a polarizing book. People kind of loved it or hated it. I... I loved it. I loved where it went. It's also super queer. The author is a trans woman and I was a fan. I thought it was great. Number 17 is Amelia Unabridged by Ashley Schumacher. This is one that kind of took me by surprise. It was sent to me from a friend of mine, not the kind of book I would usually pick up on my own, but I just thought the writing was really, really beautiful and the way things were handled was great. This is more of a hard hitting YA contemporary with a little bit of a speculative element to it. It follows a girl after the death of of her best friend as she goes to try to track down the author of one of their favorite books. And I won't get too much into the story, but I just thought this was really beautiful. It's a lot about grief, about family, about love, about starting over and like finding who you are and who you want to be. And it was just beautifully written. So uh, yeah, another one I haven't heard a lot about, but I thought it was very good. Number 16 is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambury. I really loved this. You should know I am acquaintances with Lizelle. She is an author tuber. We've met in person. I also had her come on my podcast to talk about Blood Like Magic 
it because I had questions for her after this came out because I loved it so much. I'll link that episode up above if you want to check it out, but this was great. This is dark YA sci fantasy. It's set in the future. It's got sci fi elements, but it also has magic. It follows a teen girl who comes from a family of witches, and in order to fully gain her magical abilities, she has to complete a task, which is to kill her first love. Is she gonna do it? I don't know. I mean, I do know, but it's really good. And I cannot wait for book two. If you haven't read it yet, would definitely recommend checking it out. It's a fantastic debut. Number 15 is Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Das. Another one that is so good and that I hadn't heard much about. The author actually reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing this book. And I was like, yeah, sure, it sounds up my alley. And I ended up loving it. It's so good. This is a contemporary YA retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen set in Tobago in the Caribbean. And I just thought she did an amazing job. Persuasion is a hard one to really nail retelling in a modern context. And this just worked so well. If you aren't familiar with Persuasion, you could still definitely read this and enjoy it. It's got a strong romance plot. It's also dealing with grieving the loss of a parent. Our main character is having a second chance romance with the boy she broke up with, her first love, and uh, dealing with the death of her mom. It's so good. It's so good. Um, more people should pick this up and read it for sure. Number 14 is maybe a controversial one. This is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. I feel like a lot of people maybe didn't love this because it's very, very different from his debut, which was Cemetery Boys. But I loved Lost in the Neverwoods. I think it's really interesting. It's a contemporary YA thriller that is also a retelling of Peter Pan, but like a dark take on it. And it's using the Peter Pan imagery as kind of a metaphor for talking about some dark stuff. So if you need content warnings, check it out. I, I don't know, like I didn't hear a lot of people raving about this, but I loved it. It definitely worked for me. I loved the character development. It was creepy. And, you know, I wasn't shocked by the ending, but I don't know that you're necessarily supposed to be super surprised by the ending. It's kind of, you know, telegraphed for you pretty well throughout the book. But I thought it handled things really well. I, I liked it. It's on my list. Number 13 is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. I love their books. They are so good. They are deliciously dark with morally gray characters. This one also has polyamory in it that I think is handled pretty well. And dark death magic. It it was great. Do I should I do I need to tell you any more than that? Uh, yeah, I, I have loved everything I've read from A.M. Strickland and will absolutely be picking up whatever else they decide to publish in the future. So yeah, it's it's good. If you like things on the darker side, very worth reading. Coming in at number 12 is Flamefall by Rosaria Munda. This is the sequel to Fireborn and I think this series is fantastic. If you are looking for some good YA political fantasy that is really fun, very page turnery, and does some interesting things with political philosophy and has dragons, like you need to read the series. It's really good. I think this has a lot of crossover appeal even to adult audiences. And, but it's, it, it, it's, it's so well done. Um, so yeah, Flamefall was great. Can't wait for book three coming out in 2022. It will be on my shelves. Number 11 is Casadora by Ramina Garber. This is the sequel to Lobizona and it's so good. I have to say I'm really pleased that I got some fantastic sequels in 2021 because there have been a lot of sequels that have been disappointing but this was not one of them. Casadora is great. If you haven't tried the series you definitely should. It's another one that I think is underappreciated. If you like portal fantasy and books that address big real world issues you should definitely check this out. I don't know how much I can say about it. Part of book two is set in Argentina. The author is Argentinian and it draws on some Argentinian folklore and mythology. There are werewolves and witches and queer characters. And this is a book that addresses the issue of undocumented immigrants in the United States. It deals with homophobia. It deals with sexism. It's really good. And book two is bigger and better and expands the world from what it did in Lobizona. I was so into it. And also it's just fun. It's got this fun world. It's got interesting characters. And uh, book two leaves you on this big cliffhanger. <laughs> so 
So I had originally thought it was a duology. It's definitely not a duology. I am excited for book three whenever we're getting it, hopefully in 2022, but this had to be on my list of best books. We are moving into my top 10 best YA books of 2021. And there are some really, really good ones on here, guys. Coming in at number 10 is Redemptor by Jordan Ifueco. This is the second book in the duology that began with Ray Bearer. Ray Bearer was on my list of favorite books of last year, and Redemptor is a fantastic sequel. It It's really good. A lot happens here. I can't talk that much about it, but her writing is so good. Her writing is so good. It's loosely African-inspired, epic fantasy. It's got a lot of politics, court politics. There's a lot of different forms of diversity on page. It's multi-POV. It's got a grand scale. Part of this book they go into the underworld, so that's kind of cool, and I just think it does a really good job of wrapping up the duology in a satisfying way. Very, very good conclusion. Loved it. Coming in at number nine is The Righteous by Renee Audier. This is book three in the Beautiful series. This was really good. I loved what book three did. It's among my favorite books in the series. Book two was like a little bit of a mixed bag and then book three like oh, so good. If you like paranormal romance, if you like the fae, if you like vampires, you definitely need to check out this series. This installment, <laughs> this installment was just so good. The first half of the book is primarily following two side characters from previous books and it involves a fake engagement romance plot. Uh, if you're a romance reader, you'll know what I mean. It was a lot of fun and it had the like the twists at the end of this book I was floored and one thing that I thought was really fun and cool I won't give specifics because I don't want to spoil anything but near the end of this book she does a thing that connects the world of the beautiful to the world of the wrath on the dawn which was her first duology that she ever published and my mind was blown it was very cool very exciting i loved it cannot wait for book four because the series is not over and it leaves us kind of on a cliffhanger but uh yeah this was phenomenal loved it number eight is the ivies by alexa dunn I really liked this a lot. If you want a good YA mystery thriller, I think this is a good choice. I should let you know I am online friends with Alexa. She is a fellow YouTuber, so you know, know that going in, but I really, really enjoyed this book. I've enjoyed earlier books that I've read from her, but this I think is such a step up and it's her first book that she's published in like the mystery thriller genre. It's a murder mystery set at a college prep school among girls who are competing to get into different Ivy League colleges and it's it's good and the twists like there's a lot of twists and like some good twists and I loved this book. I thought it was fantastic. I also got to have Alexa on my channel when this book came out to talk about the book and some stuff. So I will link that up above if you want to go and check it out. We had a great conversation. But yeah, the Ivies was great. And I'm excited for her next book in 2022. I was just realizing because I hadn't added it on Goodreads yet that I didn't put it on my most anticipated like mystery thriller horror list. But I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, Murder something? What is it? It's like it's called Pretty Dead Queens and it's not coming out until late 2022 but it's exciting because this was fantastic. And we, we're about to just go through several kind of mystery thriller books in this part of my list. Number seven is The Project by Courtney Summers. This is another one that was a little bit controversial. I feel like people had very mixed responses to it. I loved it. It totally worked for me. It's for sure a dark take on a YA book, but like if you look at my list, clearly clearly that's a thing I like. So <laughs> there you go. This one is about a cult. It follows two sisters, one of whom had gotten sucked into a cult and has now disappeared and her younger sister is trying to figure out what happened to her. And so you get kind of different timelines of them in the past and in the present. And I really liked it. I thought it did a great job of unpacking the mentality behind cults and what it is that people find so appealing about it and how it sucks you in. Um, yeah, anyway, I really liked it a lot. I thought it was great. Number six is a book that I really need to pick up a physical copy of at some point because I feel like I reference it frequently, but this is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. This was so good. Such a stunning debut. It's a hard-hitting YA contemporary with some thriller elements, but it's not really paced like a thriller. 
Uh, it's got like a mystery thriller piece to it though, so I don't know if people going into it necessarily are expecting the pacing that they're getting, but it's it's very, very good. It follows the main character who is indigenous, living in a community where meth is a problem, and yeah, it, it's, it's really good. There are a lot of pretty intense content warnings for this one, so do check that if you need it, including on-page essay. So just just like be aware of what's here but it's a very very good book number five is they'll never catch us by jessica goodman this is one that almost made my list of favorite books of the year it was very very good this is another ya mystery thriller following two sisters who live in a small town where in the past there had been a serial killer who had killed young women and now a friend of theirs from the cross-country team has gone missing and the older sister is a suspect for various reasons and this book is really interesting. It's a dual perspective. It follows both sisters perspective. It deals with a lot of big issues and I think handles them so well and just the character work, the way the story unfolds, the way the twists unfold, like I, this was so good. Masterclass on how to do this for a YA book. Um, yeah, really, really loved it. We are now at the top four, and all four of these were books that I gave six stars to this year, which my personal rating scale is what I give to a favorite of the year. So all four of these have also shown up on my favorite books that I read in 2021 list. Number four is, I would say, the perfect example of what a YA rom-com should be. This is She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quindlen. I loved it. This book was just pitch perfect in what I think a YA romance should be doing when it's written for teenagers. This is an enemies to lovers sapphic romance with fake dating. One of our characters has recently been broken up with by her first girlfriend and her first love, and in order to make her jealous, she wants to pretend that she's dating this other girl. But of course, they end up catching feelings in the process. There's a few things that I really love about this book. One of them is that it takes seriously first love and heartbreak, because our main character comes to realize that she is still grieving the loss of this first toxic relationship, even though it was in fact toxic for her, and eventually realizes that she needs to process that grief before she really has something to offer to somebody in a new relationship. This handles that so well. The other thing I really like about this is that while it is a romance, it doesn't end with a happily ever after, it ends with a happily for now. The girls are together, they're in a healthy relationship, they don't know for sure what's next. It's not trying to pitch it as if like this is the end all be all of their romantic lives because in high school that is rarely the case, but that it's a good healthy relationship that they're learning and growing from. So I loved this. I think She Drives Me Crazy is fantastic. It was funny and heartwarming and touching and just uh, very, very good. Number three is Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. This is the latest book in the Witchland series, which is one of my favorite ongoing YA series. If you like epic fantasy and you want something that is really crossover that would like help you get into adult high fantasy, I think this is a fantastic series for it. And this book in particular is one of my favorite books in the series. So much happens like so much happens, there's so many revelations, things with these characters that I've come to know and love over the years, like, oh my gosh, this book was a wild ride. It was incredible. And I cannot wait for the next book in the series. We're nearing the end and we're learning things that just change everything. So I'm excited for being able to go back and reread the series again coming up on the next book because, and the next book might be the last one actually, but yeah. I'm, I'm so excited to go back and reread knowing the things that I know now after reading this book because there were some big reveals that will change the way that I read everything else. It was so good. Top two. Number two is the most recent book to join this list. This is Iron Widow by Shirin J. Zhao. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I read this in December in a reading vlog, which I'll link up above if you want to check it out, where I was trying to find some new favorites of the year before the year was over by reading books I had pre-ordered that came out in 2021, and this was one of them. I originally heard about this from Reads with Rachel because she was just raving about it, and rightly so. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, but I love this book so much, so much. This was 
uh, it was like fun and cool and like fight the patriarchy. It was, it, it was great. It gave so many things and it was, a, it was, it's pretty close. It's almost a toss up, I would say for my favorite YA book of the year between this and book number one that we're going to talk about. But this is a YA sci-fi book that is also a loose retelling of the life of the one Chinese empress that lived in the past, but it's set in a sci-fi futuristic world with these giant mecha robots. So it's, it's like historical sci fantasy with anime elements, kinda, and I, I just loved it. It's got a prickly heroine who is morally gray and gives no shits about anything. It's got polyamory that I think is handled really well. I can be a hard sell on polyamory in books, but I think this book kind of nailed it. It's got a love triangle of three characters who end up just deciding to all be together. They're all bisexual, and I, I loved it. It's got very, very different types of personalities. I will say this is another book that deals with some dark issues, has some pretty intense moments, so if you need content warnings, check them out. It also has disability representation. Our main character underwent foot binding as a child, and so because of that is disabled, has trouble walking, and in some parts of the book uses a wheelchair. We also have a character who is an alcoholic, and that's treated as an illness, a disease, um, and an addiction, and I thought was handled really well. This is also a book that really talks about gender as a social construct, which I think is great. The author is queer and non-binary. They did an amazing job. It's their first book and I loved it. This was everything I wanted it to be. I can't wait for book two. And lastly, my favorite YA book that I read in 2021 is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Yimide. This has been pitched as a Gossip Girl meets Get Out, which I personally find pretty accurate. I think it's interesting. It's set at an elite private school where the two main characters are the only black students at the school and things get weird. It's got bisexual rep if you're looking for that. Both characters are bisexual. I think that's handled pretty well. And this was just such a page turner. Where it went was a trip and I loved it. One thing that I will say about this, which is is worth talking about because I've I've seen some criticisms of it more recently. I've seen some people say that this doesn't read like an American school, even though it's supposed to be set in America. That is probably because the author is not American. The author is British. And there's reasons that it's kind of set in vaguely America. But yeah, if you're expecting to read something that feels authentically like Southern America, you're not going to get that. It has a more British vibe to it, but that's really because I think of the author's experience and it's a debut. I wasn't bothered by it. Some people seem to be, but just kind of a, a heads up. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I'm so excited to read more from this author in the future. It was great. So there you go. Those are the 21 YA books that were my personal favorites that came out in 2021. I think these are some of the best books that we've gotten, including a lot of really incredible debuts. There's been some fantastic debut authors this year. We've also gotten some really amazing sequels. It's, it's been a pretty good year for YA. It's funny, I've read a lot less YA this year than in previous years because I think in general I've been pickier about what I find appealing, but clearly of the books that I am reading, a lot of them are incredible. So yeah, talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, let me know what was one of your favorite YA books that came out in 2021. Was there one that you just are raving about, loving, want to see more people read, or are happy that other people are reading? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.